Ladies and gentlemen, welcome all of you to the one day tour of Feng San Ida theme park. First of all, we will take you to the biggest natural park in southern Taiwan, Wei Wu Ying Metropolitan Park. Here you can see unique and beautiful public artworks. Second, we will head to the magnificent Chao Gong Channel, which leads the water from Gaoping River together in Qin Dynasty. After this, we will also visit the Chao Gong Temple to admire the brilliance. Later on, you will be taken to Feng Yi Tutorial Academy, which is the biggest one of the ancient colleges in Taiwan. Here you can get to know what the old testing place was like. The following spot is the new artistic highlight of Kaohsiung area, Dadong Art Center. Enjoy special constructual shapes. When we visit the largest vacation center, Ida Theme Park, don't forget to go shopping. You can take a lot of beautiful photos at the historical Gaoping Old Railway Bridge. And finally, we will visit the San He Tile Kiln, where you can see the Taiwanese building changes in the past century. Hopefully, you'll have a great time today. Wei Wu Camp is located in Fengshan District, Kaohsiung. In the Qing Dynasty, it had already been an important military site. Since 1950, Wei Wu Camp became the military training center in southern Taiwan. In 1979, when Wei Wu Camp was no longer used for military use, the unit started to move out. In 2003, the government replanned the camp area to an art park and also designed to combine the park with an art center and business area all together. The National Weiwu Camp of Arts and Cultural Center Preparatory Office was founded in 2007 in charge of the planning and operation. It is predicted to finish at the end of 2016 and officially open at 2017. The Weiwu Ying Center for the Arts covers 10 hectares out of 66.6 .6 hectares of the whole area. The rest of it will be the Weiwu Ying Metropolitan Park. In 2007, the Dutch architect Francine Hoban with her team, Meccano stood out from the other 44 works. The honor of the design this unique and modern building. Also, this art center will become one of the 10 new national constructions. Surrounded by the green field, the center has sonic style exterior with white wave that resembles a big ray fish smoothly slides on the ground, a seamless blend of the surrounding environment. It is an architectural work full of avant-garde and ecological concepts. Not only does it prove a platform for the performance, but also helps the local Taiwan art teams grow. Moreover, it will develop our sense of beauty and art. The Weiwu Yin Metropolitan Park will be the lung of Kaohsiung since it covers the biggest part of green fields. Also, it will become multiple functional culture, education, and tourists. The Wei Wu Yin Metropolitan Park covers about 60 hectares, including the Wei Wu Yin Center for the Arts. Not just the biggest natural park, there will be the biggest international art performance center in southern Taiwan. The old buildings are still remain in the area to bring us back to the old times. At the same time, you can also see the renewing making of the old things becoming more different. Most of the barracks had existed for about a century since the Japanese colonial period. In order to remember the history, three of the buildings remain and renewed to a shiny and modern artwork. The scenic overlook retains the original center water towers in the camp. Besides, a slope was added to allow visitors to spiral around the water tower and overlook the entire area. The Wei Wu Yin used to be the main military training center in southern Taiwan. The runways and the plaza in front of the three connected camps used to be the military training place. You can still see the training facilities today such as climbing bars, horizontal bars, balance beams, and a runway. These banyans are kept because you can see the memories from them. People sometimes sit under the shadows watching the leaves dancing in the wind.
Most of the trees are over 50 years old. You can see the branches swaying, also providing shelter for the birds. Everything is so perfect that you can easily feel the happiness from your breathing. The lake sparkles, colorful flowers along the trail, sometimes butterflies thrive, fly through. When you walk on the trails, your mind gets more peaceful with every step forward. Also the steels with poems on them stand aside. You can also stop to read. These poems were all carved on the stones showing the poet's feelings about nature. On the west side of the camp, there are three straight paths that you can walk along. There's a bike path along which goes through the park. It used to be an old road, and when they renewed the park, they removed the old buildings. And moreover, the road was designed to bend into a bike path. After it was opened in 2010, this old military camp turned into a brand new artwork. The public art sculptures made this park unique and modern. Fong Yi Tutorial Academy, next to the Cheng Huan Temple, was established in 1814 and renewed in 1891. There used to be 37 houses, all very exquisite architectural details. It's so far the biggest and completed one of all preserved ancient colleges on Taiwan. Moreover, you can find the school system of the Qin Dynasty. The name of Fong Yi means active education and being talented. It used to be the school and the place for tests, which was also the first private school in Feng San. During the Japanese occupation, the Taiwan government tried to promote the new education system and that led to the decline of colleges. Schools were even turned into hospitals, keeping Silkworm and Feng San County Hall dormitory. After the retrocession, the Ministry of Education was in charge of these colleges. However, the houses started to be occupied by tenants. It was no longer looks like a school, and it was listed as a third rank monument in 1985. In 2009, the renovation started and it was completed in 2013, and officially opened to visitors on November 1, 2014. The college faces south in its very typical Taiwanese style building. The buildings still exist today from south to north are the wall, the first door, auditorium, hall, two corridors, and two stone drums with dragons at both sides of the main entrance. These have proven that Feng Yi Tutorial Academy was well designed at the moment. In order to show the humbleness, the entrance wouldn't be in the middle of the building. Instead, it would be at the two sides of the wall. On the left side, there's a board with learning about ritual, and on the right side is the getting closer to literature. You can also see a lot of cultural antiquities in the college. All of the building materials are the finest Fuzhou wood and still remain in very good condition today. At the very first start, the school was designed with having the auditorium in the front as the main teaching space. At the two sides of the school were six classrooms for students. At the back side is the office, the place for the teachers to work, live, and worship. After the repairing, also placing different types of dolls featuring artistic group statues, which are lovely and vivid. It's like traveling back into the Qin Dynasty.
It presents the scene that Chao Jing, who used to be the mayor of Fengshan, visiting the college. The escorting team carried some signs with avoid and silence, which is really interesting. The students in Qing Dynasty needed to prove the officers that they were strong and healthy, with lots of training like bow, sword, and weight training. The main building was the auditorium. It was at the center of the college. The principal and teachers would give the classes here. You can also see that the students were from everywhere. Some of them were young and excited, while others were old and had been taking the exams several times. The most interesting historical site in Taiwan may be the Fengyi Tutorial Academy. These cute dolls show what the ancient examining system may have been like, and it will make your visit here more interesting. There is a stereotype writing presentation, Gong Yan Experience, and Shen Guan Tu, which is similar to the game Monopoly today. Gong Yan is the examination room we call today. The examinees had to stay about 10 days in these small rooms. At daytime, they were where they took exams and the place to rest at night. They could write on the wooden shelves during the day. At night, they would remove it to rest. Because of the space was really small, so the students could only curl themselves to rest. The rooms in Fengyi Tutorial Academy were the offices and places to live. In the hall, there were Wen Chang, Gui Xing, and Chang Shen. At each, there were two rooms for the teachers. The house numbers on the rooms were from 35 residents who used to live here. Every time when they visit here, they always think of the old times and their ancestors. The classrooms were planned to the students to stay before, but in order to present the changes in the past 200 years, they were divided into four rooms to stage the history of tea. Yo Feng Lai Yi from Mid Qing period, the Late Qing Dynasty period, westerly eastward during the Japanese occupation, south of the border, and the last is Formosa as the Taiwan after the war. The classroom is now turned into a place for the visitors to enjoy the tea. Once you spend over $300 in the Fengyi College, you can use the tea room here for one hour free. You just need to book the room. Fengyi Tutorial Academy is given a new life now, so if you want to stay away from the busy city life a little bit, it's definitely your best choice to visit. Chao Jin was sent to Taiwan as the mayor of Fengshan in 1837. His first challenge there was the serious drought. In order to solve this problem, he started to build a dam with the water from Gaoping River. This made the fields into one that gained harvest twice a year. But several years after, the water could no longer afford the needed. Therefore, Chao Jin planned to build a new dam for irrigation and added more fields. He built the dam with the methods back from his hometown, leading the water from Gaoping River, irrigated land over Gaoshan. In order to remember what he had done, the channel was named after him. During the Japanese occupation period, the government rebuilt Chao Gong Channel and added a concrete gate and reinforced concrete weir. Chao Gong Channel has become the first electric pump to work as the canal water irrigation channel in Taiwan. The city government also put a lot of efforts on improving the Chao Gong Channel. The paths along the channel are now the popular place to take walks. At night, the lights along the paths look like shining stars. Chao Gong Temple is on the Chao Gong Road, Fengshan Gaosheng. In order to commemorate Chao Jing, the greatest water expert in Qing Dynasty, also as a mayor who loved his citizens like his own family. It was built in 1992 for the gratitude he paid to the local people. 
The statue of him was also made into gold so that it could be worshipped forever. The traditional Taiwanese temple style buildings are special and there are 12 steles from different periods at the south side of the plaza. Four of them with the story of Cao Gong Channel on the steles are the most special ones. The red side door of Cao Gong Temple and the steps made of bricks make the whole building look elegant and quaint. King Tun Fort locates right after the Chao Gong Temple and is listed as a third rank monument. There's a path that you can walk to the fort. Also, you can see a board with Ping Chin there. The Ping Chin Fort was founded to guard the northwest side of Feng San, outside the moat, muzzle face west side, preventing direct invasion. The fort is square shaped and with walls made of stone and lime. Even the fort is no longer for defending use, but its existence can make us recall the history. Due to the aging performing facilities in Sun Yat Sen Memorial Hall, and to continue promoting the cultural industries in Feng San, the government started a plan, the Dagon Art Center, to face the changes and to provide a platform that the citizens can enjoy performances. Dagon Art Center started building in December 2008, costing more than $1.5 billion. It covers 3.4 hectares, with a surrounding green belt for a total area of over 10 hectares and it opened to the public on March 12, 2012. It is a center combining both living art and local specialties. This building can also do carbon reduction. It was designed by both Dutch team and Taiwan, and the building used lots of oblique column design with low e-glass to reduce cold conduction to save more energy. Also to create a stylish modern architectural built building, its large funnel building appearance will be covered with light at night. The designing concept of this art center is the nature. With the outdoor space, foundation, and green, fill can make you feel the beauty of Zen. It is considered to be a multiple function center. There is an auditorium, an exhibition hall, art library, children's library, art education center, and outdoor performance space. The Unique Art Specialist Library collects art, audio, and video, books, and multimedia arts. It is also the first art library in Taiwan. The body of it was in a classic and simplest style. The roof is semi-cleared and looks like an air bloom floating in the sky. There is also a natural outdoor plaza with music and dance performances sometimes. The beautiful scene and elegant sculptures will attract more people to come. You can take a walk in Dadagon Art Center or enjoy the performances in different topics. Moreover, if you are tired, you can even have some coffee at the cafes. The outdoor building looks like a hot air balloon. At night after lighting, it also looks both like a lantern and a hot air balloon. It shows different style at day and night. At night, there will be different colors of LED lights on the building. Also with the effects from the fountain, it is definitely the most eye-catching spot in Feng San area. There will also be a living art store, bookstore in the art center, providing the local artists a place to display their works and sell them.
The multiple function room allows the combination of art and business activities, making the Doggone Art Center a platform for more talented artists. Doggone Art Center was designed to make art getting closer to daily life, to bring local specialties and environment together and to make it the best place for the citizens to relax. Ida Theme Park is somewhere that combines art, shopping, and you can spend your vacation in. It is the only Greek theme park in Taiwan, which is built with unique mountain views and the scenes from the ancient stories. The atmosphere and the buildings will make you feel like you are walking on the streets in Greece. The Ida theme park is divided into three parts and they are connected by light rail up in the air which allows the visitors to enjoy the beautiful view up there. Moreover, the total amount of the amusement rides is the largest in Taiwan. Ferris Wheel is located near the Building A of the Shopping Plaza. It was officially opened on February 10, 2010. It is the tallest Ferris Wheel in Taiwan, which is about 215 meters high. At night, it will show you more than 100 kinds of light effects. It soon became the new landmark in Kaohsiung. The sea building is the center of the shopping plaza and there is a skating palace, baseball court, combat courts, indoor basketball courts and the largest digital 3D film cinema in southern Taiwan. The sea building is connected to the Ida theme park so you can see the difference that is more energetic and younger. Taiwan Storyline combines the Western architecture with traditional Oriental stories together perfectly. Once you walk into the building, the big lanterns catch your eyes immediately and make you feel like you travel back into the 1950s. It is a perfect place for the visitors to recall the good old times. The floor is covered with red bricks and some old decorations that will make you think of the past times. Ida Outlet Mall is the biggest project of Ida World. It is in the leading position in Taiwan's retail development. Ida Outlet Mall is not just the biggest shopping mall in Asia, but it also allows the brands to manage the stores themselves. There are over 300 well-known brands in the mall and 11 of them offer products at special discounts. In the B building of the shopping mall, there's something that you shouldn't miss. The ceiling over there is just as beautiful as the sky corridor at the Venetian Macau. The ceiling can show the stars, four seasons, and lots of different scenes, also with the music and lights changing. There are about 30 restaurants in the food court on the fourth floor. Under the light coming from the windows, you will have lots of options of good food. The 123 outdoor market is located at 123 meters above sea level. Where is the outdoor market of Ida Outlet Mall? It covers 86,000 footage of the Central Garden. Also, 123 means continuing exciting ideas. Not only the outdoor restaurants, there is also a performing area allowing the visitors to watch water dances and performances. 
The main goal of this outdoor market is hoping to lead the fashion of Kaohsiung area. Therefore, there's a lot of brands and cool restaurants. Mingxing Avenue is designed in European style. You can see what's new and popular here, and also the great food. The Sun Arena area and the outdoor market is filled with a warm and festive atmosphere. The stores here all have themes. It is in order to create the most passionate outdoor space in Taiwan. On weekends, there are a lot of performances and concerts that you can join, also providing the performers a very good platform for making themselves to be seen. The Old Railway Bridge Education Wetland Zone is located between the Old Iron Bridge and Galping Bridge. The construction started from 2002, and there are 13 artificial ponds to purify water with natural function. The whole park covers about 300 hectares, containing walking paths, bike paths, natural area, green parks, and coffee plazas. This wetland education park combines a unique cultural and her historical heritage in Dash area. Ecology, water, and landscape is a very unique combination of leisure and educational attractions. Herbicides are not allowed use here. Instead, the staff here weeds themselves in order to be environmentally friendly, and it makes the wetlands a good environment for the growth of plants and birds. You can walk along the riverbank or enjoy biking to the natural scenery and get really close to the wild animals and plants. The amazing nature and view of the river will make you feel peace. What makes this park special is that the water source of this park is from industrial and domestic wastewater. This beautiful park, brought out of the awareness of protecting the nature. The local people work together in making the park paradise for wild animals. The Galpin Railroad Bridge was built in 1913 during the Japanese occupation, and it was designed by Japanese engineers. It's 1,526 meters long of iron bridge and based on 24 steel trusses and brick piers. This beautiful arch bridge goes across the Gaoping River. It links the transportation between Pingdong and Gaosheng. Gaoping River was called Sha Dan Shui River then, so the old bridge was also known as Sha Dan Shui Bridge. In 1983, the Taiwan Railway Administration built a new railway at the north side of the original railway for safety reasons. After the construction was completed in 1987, the old bridge was no longer in use. The old bridge was planned to be removed, but with the efforts of all parties running to retain from different people, it survived and was listed as a second-ranked monument. Also, it is the only iron bridge that is listed as a national monument. Even though the bridge is no longer in use, it is celebrated for its birthday. The government decided to build a skywalk which is 307 meters long and 8 meters wide and a viewing platform for visitors to rest. When you walk on the skywalk, you can get close to admire the beauty and heritage and also enjoy the natural scenery.
The trains will also go from the new railways, which are right next to the old railways. Sometimes when the trains go through the rails, you can see the transition between the two generations. The old bridge stands proudly above the Galping River. With very good condition, you can't even tell it's been more than 100 years old. Sanhe Tile Kiln was known as Shunan Tile Factory and was founded in 1918. After changing its name two times, until the first generation of Lee bought the kiln in 1928, it was finally named Sanhe Tile Kiln. The second generation of Lee was hoping that the three descendants could work together to make this family business grow, so he named this kiln Sanhe. It is located in Dashe District, Gaoshan, near the Shandan Shui Bridge. It was nominated to be one of the 10 best tourist sites and top 100 historical buildings. And now it has been listed as a third rank monument. There used to be more than 20 kilns at its peak, but in 1970, the whole tile industry started to decline. The kilns disappeared one after another, and Sanha Tile Kiln is the only one left now. The Sanha Tile Kiln locates right next to the old bridge. After being run by the Lee family, and now the fourth generation of this family, it still shows its pride and sticks with traditional values. When the family business passed to the hands of the fourth generation of the kiln owners, traditional tile industry has become a sunset industry. Due to the love of it, the owner thought that maybe to work with the community can invoke the past of manufacturing bricks and dashu, thereby allowing the Sanha Tile Kiln to be able to find a new way. Therefore, it started with the community developing project to work with the community using more tiles in construction. At the same time, it keeps bringing more creative tile products. It also wants to make more people know about the tile culture. Currently, Sanha Tile Kiln set its goals as inventing more tile products and designing and introducing the tile kiln, DIY and community renewing in order to make it a place where it can both be educational and interesting. In order to promote the tile sculpture, Sanha brings products which can really be used in daily life. With the specialties of absorbing water quickly and its color, the designers try to present these to the customers to make them know more about tiles. Even though the kiln has been registered as a heritage, it is still open to everyone so that people can know more about the history of tiles. Combining the local history also with the cultural and creative trend, it also provides DIY activities and tile products which are really popular with the visitors. From doing it on their own, it will reinforce a connection with the history. In the museum, you can see the traditional constructing materials and building methods, which also attract lots of people to visit. Different from the cement or fixture, the traditional Taiwanese building materials and construction would breathe the display wall with the recycled materials and traditional building construction methods. It will make you feel like getting closer to the land again and live with loop with the seasons changing and mother nature. Sanha Tile Kiln is still insisting on using the traditional kiln construction methods which is burning the woods and paddy while making the tiles. It's rarely seen today and is the only kiln that sticks with the traditional style in southern Taiwan. Besides keeping producing the traditional bricks for monument restoration, they are also seeking transportation hoping to bring new energies to this old industry. When you walk into the souvenir store, you will see lots of warm and interesting creative products. 
San Hotel Kiln as a brand, they choose red, which is the original color of the bricks, also with a little glaze to highlight the beauty of the tile. You can easily feel the warmth from the artworks with hand touch. Combining the red color and the spirit of the local wedding culture turns out to be the firm and touching blessing. San Hotel Tile Kiln keeps on bringing new products to the market in order to make the visitor stay longer, moreover to feel the specialty of the old school style architecture. Here you can even taste the local food and traditional snacks to recall the good old days.